What's the most obscene display of private wealth you've ever witnessed? My ex's dad's semi-daily driver was an Aston Martin Vanquish. They lived in a multi-million dollar home. Rented entire homes condos all around the world for multiple family vacations each year. And my ex's private high school tuition cost double what my college tuition cost. His parents paid out of pocket for he and his two siblings to go to very expensive colleges. He had multiple trust funds and investments. And they were perfectly wonderful people. All of them. Very family oriented. Very kind. As generous as they were wealthy. They endowed scholarships. Worked hard. Gave great advice. Gave to charity. And were always attempting to learn and observe the world around them and changing their views accordingly. Great family. Saddest part of the breakup for me was breaking up with the rest of the family tbh. Quirky one. I have a regular day job. But I also teach English as a second language to Gulf nationals. In particular Saudi families. I receive a lot of gifts. But one boy I tutored came from a family who owned some of the most expensive racing camels in the Gulf. The father buys and sells these animals that are over six figures. When the son graduated. The father allowed me to choose a camel that would be mine. And designated as not for sale. I have a racing camel in Saudi Arabia that lives probably in better conditions than I do. Family I know bought the 3 million dollar house next door so they could knock it down for a tennis court. Edit. Well so it seems this is a common occurrence. The house that this family owns is already huge and they had plenty of space for a tennis court but they didn't want to move a sculpture they had to the other side of the garden. No one in their family plays tennis. The CEO of Oracle bought every single house at the beach he lived at so he could turn it into a private beach. I used to be an optician in a very high end optical shop. I had a customer spend $15k on glasses in one hour. He was wearing overalls covered in paint and dirt. No one else wanted to help him. I approached and began to help him when he decided he wanted to look at Cartier glasses. The Cartier case is always locked and the key is in the owner's office. So I politely excused myself and on my way to retrieve the key. My co-workers were warning me to be careful. He just wants to steal the eyewear. My co-workers were all dumbfounded when I walked to the back to ring up his order on the credit card machine. As I asked how do I ring up $14.995? Manager's mouth dropped to the floor. Turns out customer is Andre Rue. Best commission check ever. And I still hold the company record for highest sale. So I'm told. We owned a karaoke service in Las Vegas. Got a call one day at 730pm from a party planner we often worked with. They wanted us to be at the Venetian in one. Five hours for a four hour event. Price is not an issue. We gave them a decent last minute deal. $2000. Turns out this was for a private gambling club. They had a special room with the big table game set up. Minimum buy in just to attend was $500. 000 actual cash on hand and another $500. 000 line of credit. Minimum bet was $5000 with no maximum. Most bets were $20k or more, a stack of $20 1000 chips. I forgot to mention. There was also a $1. 000. 000 membership fee, one time. Lifetime to get invited to these kinds of events. The smallest chip in the room was $100. And that's what they used for tipping. I made over $3000 in tips that night. Plus my pay of $2000. In 4 hours. Rumor was that one guy lost $3. 5 million. In 4 hours. My dad's boss was the billionaire CEO of a fortune 500 company. We were invited to his private the 4th of July party at his home in Corona Del Mar. Where Robin Williams was hired to entertain. And he had his own fireworks barge anchored in the water just beyond the house. The fireworks alone cost more than 300k dollars. Wouldn't be surprised if the whole party cost half a million dollars. P. S. Robin Williams private comedy shows were not family friendly. Edit. Just thought of another one. 
Second hand story. Several years ago I worked with some folks from a large business jet company that were raving about their last job. A Saudi prince had just purchased a new jet for a cool 80 million dollars. And spent another 80 million dollars in upgrades and interior finishes alone. We're talking about rare wood furnishing throughout. Exotic stone. Handcrafted upholstery. And everything else is gold or gold plated. Including a gold plated Xbox integrated into the custom entertainment system the plane was painted this obnoxiously bright yellow color from nose to tail. The reason? It was a birthday gift for his 16 year old son. So that the color of his plane would match his Lamborghini. During college I worked at a place selling very high end patio furniture in the richest DC suburb. One day a Washington Redskin comes in and buys a custom patio furniture set for his deck and pool area. Total cost for 10 pieces was over $24.000. He paid cash and I set up delivery for 6 weeks later because the furniture had to be made at the manufacturer. 3 weeks later he was cut by the team. I called when the order came in and he said oh. I'm in the Caribbean now. Think I'm selling that house 3. Think I'm going to retire. You like the furniture? Me. Yeah. Him. You can have it. Thanks for being a fan. 14 years later and I still have that furniture and the fanciest patio set up in my middle class neighborhood. Guy from my town bought a helicopter. I met the CEO of the company I work for and I complimented his watch. The first thing he did is take it off a day let me wear it. Come to find out after doing a little research. The watch he was wearing is a Patek Philip that cost one. 75 million. That watch alone cost more than every asset in my family for the past 4 generations. I went to a birthday party in 3rd grade. Every girl in the 3rd grade was invited. So 80 girls were picked up in limos. Taken to build a bear where we could choose any bear. Then we all got manicures and pedicures. We went to Red Robin for dinner. And limoed back to her mansion for a sleepover. I will never attend a party that fancy ever again. David Tepper. Billionaire hedge fund manager that moved out of New Jersey. Doing this caused New Jersey to have really their entire state budget. I work for a distribution power company. We have done multiple projects for a very wealthy customer who is more than happy to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to convert all the overhead power lines that surround his private house block to underground cables just for aesthetics. I was helping an owner rent his apartment. Which is an investment property. It's a 2. 500 square feet condo with 4 balconies and 360 degree views of Midtown East in Manhattan asking for $15. 000 slash month. Rented it for 6 months up front with option to renew to someone who has ties to oil families in the Middle East. The person never moved in. One of my dad's friends from high school is unbelievably rich and a collector. He owns a legitimate Stradivarius. Eventually. He decided he wanted to learn how to actually play it. So he signed up for lessons and brought a F-King Stradivarius with him down to the local music shop to meet his instructor and have his first lesson. I can only imagine the look on his instructor's face. You mean he didn't have the instructor come to him? How quaint. When I was living in Southern California. My buddy's dad was a therapist specializing in addiction. Needless to say. He made an absolute killing. He was a wealthy person that hated wealthy people. As in snobs. The country club types. People that own yachts to participate in a pissing contest. Etc. He paid to have a statue of a chicken made and put it directly in his front yard. This thing was not only fully painted and somewhere between 15 and 25 feet tall. It crowed loudly every day at sunrise. When I asked him why he had it. He simply said because my neighbors are yuppie dickheads. My last job before college was dealing with what they call the 1% now. We had a call from a customer who had spent a 5 figure sum for items for her house. And realized the house she had it sent to was not the house she wanted to decorate with them. After being informed the order was already in transit she just reordered everything and had it rush delivered to the house she wanted it for. 
she was totally cool with it. I always picture the basement of her one house having the duplicates sitting there. Worth far more than what I made at that job in a year. My boss owns a 15 plus million dollar cottage. He likes to entertain and throw some pretty wild parties. His wealthy neighbors down the lake complained about the noise and frequently called police. One day they saw him on the street and told him smugly that they had a generous offer on their cottage and they were moving. I know. Said my boss. I bought it. In summer of 1988 I was 16 and I went on a family trip to visit relatives in Cali. Colombia. One night. They took us on a drive around town to see the city at night. On the tour. We passed a 6 or 7 story office tower under construction in a residential neighborhood that my cousin told me was to be the future home of one of the city's largest narco-traficantes. Or drug kingpins. While the house was under construction. He'd had another large mansion built directly across the street so he could keep an eye on the building's progress from his home. Essentially. He built a mansion to live in while he watched his bigger mansion being built. Without even looking at the wine list, bring me a case, to start, of your most expensive Chardonnay. A few pitchers of Sprite. A few plates of lemons. And glasses of ice. These girls really like wine coolers. The wine was $550 per bottle of a Chassain Montrichard. But I didn't charge them for the Sprite. Ice? Or lemons. Comma and. Yes. They proceeded to mix arguably the world's finest white wine with Sprite and lemons. And slugged it back over ice through straws. The guy was a PRN producer and was celebrating an extremely good year in a restaurant in Austin where I worked. Tab ended up being almost 12k. He also was rocking a black. Satin. Burt Reynolds jacket like it was still 1979. Comma ready. That was the guy's name. Edit. I'm not saying $12. 000 is an obscene amount of money. But to use it to make a bunch of wine coolers out of is extremely ridiculous. I didn't care. Though. The table was auto gratted at 20% anyway. Yay for me that night. I work in a shoe store. I once had a customer walk in and say give me one pair of every men's shoe in a size 10. Didn't want to try them on or look at them. He just needed some shoes for each of his houses. Asterisk. I work on commission so it was a huge sale for me. But holy fck. That was about 140 pairs of shoes. I would like to imagine this building the last few times this dude went to the lake house and had no shoes. Went to the cabin. No fck iron shoes. Out to the summer home. And goddammit. He only wore flip flops out there. Where are the son of a bitch shoes? Goes to shoe store. And in a fit of shoe induced rage. Buys a lifetime supply of shoes. My boss was a military liaison in Dubai and told me a story about a guy he became friends with there. One night they are driving back from a night of debauchery in this guy's brand new Ferrari and it breaks down. He pulls over to the side of the road gets out and starts walking while calling his people to come get him bring him another car. He doesn't mention anything about the broken Ferrari so my boss asks him about it. His response was what about it? It's broken. I'll just buy another. People have stupid amounts of money in Dubai. Edit. For all the people asking why my boss didn't keep ask for the car. He couldn't because it would have been considered a gift and the military would have just confiscated it. People that have worked there also have all kinds of stories about the gifts locals would buy for people that they simply had to let the military have or give them back. My husband wrote a movie, long story, with a friend of his who is a full time writer in Hollywood. Friend went to the house of a famous producer to pitch their script. He called my husband and said. They have a Picasso. Husband is like. Whoa. Very cool. Friend says. The Picasso is in their parking garage. Eater. Yes. A movie is a long story. And don't call me Shirley. Eater 2. I am in the US. Had no idea there is a small crappy car called a Picasso. But till. You don't have to define what a movie is. A friend of mine's stepdad hired Smash Mouth to play at his Labor Day party for around 200 people. 
best $500 he could have spent. They got the show on and got paid. I've been to Monaco. A harbor full of private yachts was awe inspiring. My boss once had me drive him to an exotic car dealership to pick up his new Bentley. Three days after my paycheck had bounced. Someone spending you a cute 15k on Caver in Fortum and Masons. Me behind them. Standing there with my you are cute to chocolate bar. You are cute to on a chocolate bar. Well. Ladida. Look at Mr. Moneybags. I had a friend whose sibling married someone in the British aristocracy. I was at their house and needed to pee. So my friend indicated towards the correct door. I went into the bathroom. And I swear to god. I got lost trying to find the toilet. But it was okay. Because there were a lot of old Dutch masters oil still lifes to look at in there. I had an obscenely wealthy kid in my graduating class. His parents bought him a brand new Range Rover on his 16th birthday and he crashed it into a school bus. They got him a new one and he crashed it road racing. A guy who moved 300 miles away just so he could buy a plane to fly to work every day. This dude turned life up to nightmare difficulty and then toggled god mode. I was driving for Uber in a college town and picked up a group from one of the richer frat houses to take them to a club. The girls were discussing how one of their friends was upset and went on a huge shoe shopping spree where each pair cost roughly $2. 000 except for one. This one pair costed $7. 000. One of the girls casually expresses that $7.000 is really not a bad price to pay for shoes. They should have just been a little bit prettier. I would have paid $5.000 for them. Why they called a Uber instead of a limo? I don't know. A guy once gave me a $300 bottle of scotch for fixing his motorhome at the dunes. He didn't know how to reprime his diesel and had run one of the tanks out of fuel. It only took me 5 minutes. And he had plenty of that crap scotch you kids like laying around. I'm pretty sure he was just kidding and was super nice. But I would have been happy with a 6 pack of PBR. One of my students gets dropped off to school in a helicopter. I remember there was a kid at my school whose parents brought him McDonald's for lunch every Friday, we thought that was obscene but a helicopter drop off is up there too. A guy at my high school used to get picked up every day in a vintage Rolls Royce. He lived 5 minutes down the road. Edit. Answering some questions. The car was from the 20s and in impeccable condition. And apparently some rare model or something. It had gold detailing. The guy lived 5 minutes down the road walking. So about 15 minutes away by car thanks to post school traffic. The family were known to be pricks. The guy who picked him up was his grandfather. Who always carried one of those fancy gold tipped canes. The reason why I hated him was pure jealousy I too would drive everywhere if I owned a car as beautiful as that. If I could ride home in a Rolls. I'd do it even if I lived next door. They had a black swan and an albino peacock. A party at the CEO's house for Halloween. Insanity. I thought I was going to get kicked out of the neighborhood because I was only driving a 30k car. Not a 300k car. Anything you can think of. He had at this party, staff with signature cocktails at the door. A fully staffed bar for liquor. A fully staffed bar for wine. An entire table made of ice with ice shot glasses and 10 different vodkas. He was wearing a costume made of leather that his wife commissioned for him. Handmade in France. The 400 yard bridge to his private lake was strung up with extra lights. And the dock had a separate bar for those who wanted to sit on the lake. At least he was sharing the fun. Comma sounds insane and fun. I work in the parts department at a luxury car dealership. We basically have two kinds of customers. People who ask for a quote on touch up paint, dollar sign 55, zero zero after tax, and then say why is it so expensive? People who want to just straight up order carbon fiber exhaust tips, dollar sign 6500, zero zero after tax. Not that they even ask the price, 
and just ask if they should pay then or when they pick them up. Friend in high school was driving a new BMW 733i, top model in 1983. I asked him about it, he said his mom flew the coupe. So his dad gave her car to him. Later in the year. We were doing compulsory volunteer work at the same place. So I'd head over to his house after school until we had to show up at volunteer work. That's when I met his dad. It was like a scene out of Scarface. Or Goodfellas. Or Casino. Or any other Hollywood mob movie. Dude looked like a total gangster. And all his business associates hanging around the house looked the same. About a year after I graduated. I bumped into another high school friend who immediately asked. Hey. Did you hear about censored? I indicated I had not. And they proceeded to tell how the FBI had caught censored's dad off the Atlantic coast in a cabin cruiser laden with tons of drugs. Headed to New York City. Father took a federal rap and censored was now out to both parents. I know a student that prints documents with a black background and white text.